I do have a cheese scone in the car. Can we share it? Those are three words I never want to hear again, Chris. Even though there's a good chance I'll be feeding you some dinner tonight. What's on the menu? Chicken casserole, roast potatoes, some um, good old English stuffing. What a bad dessert. Uh, apple crumble, I thought I heard. With? You could have custard if you wanted it. And ice cream if you wanted custard and ice cream. I'll share me cheese scone. So this is what we're looking at. Not bad, not great. But we're here now, so we might as well stick it out. Such a cynic. Well, you know, when you've done this as long as I have, Chris, you know, you just... You, you get like a sixth sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll, you'll learn. My feet are cold. I'm going to rub them for you. Do you mind? Hundred dollars? You suck on my big toe. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Oh, you took it too far. <laughs> oh, uh, $200? <laughs> well, your dog will just do it for free. Oh, that's true. That's true. Put some peanut butter in certain places, you're good to go. Oh! Don't take it too dark. I'll get thumbs down and a, and a mm. complaint. That troll keeps keeps complaining about my videos for the swears. Bastard. <laughs> You know what would be brilliant is if you just boshed that subscribe button and tickled that bell so that you get notifications when I post new videos. So I'm back down near the beach and the tide is still not out enough. Maybe you can just see the sea stack there. We need it to go out probably another 200 feet and then it would be perfect, but then it's, it's gonna be dark. And the light is actually, I wouldn't say fantastic, but it's kind of interesting. I like what these clouds are doing here. So my only option, realistically, is to get the drone out. So I'm gonna put the drone up in the air, get it as close as I dare to the sea stack. It's super windy, so I'm making a potentially huge mistake here, but <clears throat> I'll just get it up in the air and just see how it feels. And if it's really sketchy, then I'll bring it back. But if it looks like it's gonna do okay, I'll try and get a shot in this fading early evening light. Just as this was, I just didn't feel the need to capture any stills. Besides, I had to bring the drone back because at this point, I could not feel my thumbs. Well, that was, uh, that was quite miserable. It's gotta be at least minus 70 by now. Uh, minus 170, yeah. I think, yeah. Fahrenheit. I don't know if today was a total bust or not. I guess it was nothing for you, eh? I got nothing, zilch. So we'll come back in the morning, eh? Okay, works give it, for me. Give it another shot, but if, if on the way back it's dark enough, there is this beautiful church that I really like. I'm not, I don't have a thing for churches, I know you might think that too, but <laughs> just the way that the, the snow is covering it and the trees in front of it and all the, the gravestones, it just looks kind of cool. So if, if we spot that on the way back, I might stop there, but no promises, it might be crap. Now at first glance, you might be thinking, what's all the fuss about? But when the lights go on, the magic of blue hour landscape photography begins. And it's time to shoot. Right, you might not be able to see us, especially now that the car's headlights have gone, but this is us in front of this church. So I was driving past this last night and I just thought, wow, it's so gorgeous because not just is it just a nice looking church, but all the snow on the trees in front of it. But with the bell tower, that light and then that stained glass window, just an absolutely gorgeous blue hour scene. So I've already found the composition that I want. It's just, just about 20 feet away from the camera and about 24 millimeters, but I'll play with a few different focal lengths, maybe get a little bit longer with a 55 maybe. What do you think? I like it. The colors are really good in the stained glass. What um, would you do with this then? Uh, if I had my 10 stop or six stop ND filter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were just saying it'd be kind of cool because it's not, it's not really fully dark yet, but if you had like a 10 stop filter, because the clouds are moving so fast in that direction, if you had like a three minute 
maybe uh, maybe like a four minute exposure you'd have a really interesting uh, cloud shape but i kind of like the natural shape that you're looking at right now so i'm gonna i'm gonna frame up a shot and then uh, take it from there you got a new lens have you i do what is it it's the canon 14 to 35 f4 Ooh. So we'll give that a shot after some frostbit fingers and about 200 passing cars I got the shot. I just love blue hour landscape photography like this but I need your opinion because after I edited this image I couldn't resist just doing a square crop to remove the distraction of that orange street lamp but I also kind of liked it so post a comment and let me know which you prefer and why you know what's interesting is uh, Chris's new vehicle look at this I have questions Chris okay um when did you purchase this grump wagon? Uh, about five months ago. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. Anybody influenced that decision there? Maybe a couple. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, Grumpton? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Thomas. Thomas Heaton. For sure. I think that Mitsubishi should pay you you guys. You know, I'm not kidding. You, you know, you might look at the finished result and think, oh, it looks cool. But I have seen Grumpton break down in that grump wagon it, it's inevitable at least once a year, usually twice a year, and it's usually very, very expensive. The last one cost him something like $1,200 to get towed back home. That's before the repair bill. So you are prepared for this, right? Prepared, yeah. Any issues so far? No, I mean, I've done a few journeys. Yeah. You know, 15 kilometers down the road. It's All not, right. It's not been bad. But any, any problems so far in the 15 kilometers well, you've done? Transmission's not the greatest. What's the problem? A bit slammy. <laughs> slammy. Mm. That, that never sounds mm. good, does it? Yeah. It sounds like a slamming knocking sound when you shift gears. Yeah, a bit of a, you know, you shift gears and there's a bit of a lurch on the vehicle and a bit of a, you know. How old is it? 24 years old. I'm just letting you know what you're in for, right? I'm just letting you know. This is this is what I've witnessed with Grumpatious. And other people that I, I know who have had these things, they're a cool vehicle, but uh, they're antiques, they're classic cars. You know, you've got to prepare for that. So you've got your CAA coverage. I have Gold Elite. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be all right then. Yeah. Unless you're on a dirt road. In the middle of nowhere. Which is pretty much a guaranteed where you will have a problem. I had a problem and I was told we don't tow on dirt roads i said well what am i going to do phone a tow company they'll tow you you mean the same tow company you were going to pay to come and pick me up until you found out i was on a dirt road the ones that you said don't do it yeah phone them they'll come and tow you something is wrong about this equation here all right should we get down on the Let's beach go. So we're down on the beach and the sun's just popped up. Have a look at this business. Now, I've never been here before, mainly because it's just some cliffs. And that's it. <laughs> so I'm not that sure that there's anything to shoot. However, um, whenever you come to somewhere like this, my plan is usually to just kind of often try and ignore the main thing that everybody else comes here for and see if I can spot something else and already I can see you probably can't see it on this but there's all these patterns and shapes where the water is poured down towards the ocean I think it's from when the tide comes up and then it gets sucked back out you've got all these patterns and swirly shapes in the sand so that might be good then you've also got these transient waterfalls that are just pouring quite heavily right now but they might have some nice ice shapes just like that one back there at the bottom of the stairs so I don't know, I might be being overly optimistic, but I'm hoping that there's something. And almost immediately there was something, but would I have the good sense to listen to my gut, 
put down the camera bag and start shooting right away? I think you know the answer. I kind of like this stuff here. I don't know if you can see that, but this is, this is ocean water that's frozen around this little pool. And then the sun's just popping up and it's just hitting all of these edges here, making a really nice highlight on the edge. So that might actually be a shot. Do I get my camera out or do I keep walking? Oh, I can't decide. I'll do a little bit more walking, see what else I can find. Oh, Gavin, what are you doing? Go back, go back and shoot those, oh, you idiot. And I was kind of regretting not going back to yesterday's sea stack. So of course, after we left the uh, sea stack, we've got <laughs> big pink puffy clouds right behind us. Right where that sea stack would have been. <laughs> oh, it's just brilliant though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Legitimate question. How many of you have experienced ice on a red sandy beach? So I think if we want to get an interesting shot of these cliffs behind us, I feel like we have to move away from them, go in the opposite direction, and then perhaps put on the telephoto and shoot towards it because when you're close to it it's just not that interesting you don't really see as much of the interesting shapes and forms as you can see from further away so that is the plan i mean now already because i got further away i've actually got some nice reflections in these uh, these, these waters this is actually rock so this is not sand this is rock so these reflections are going to stay here for a bit longer and some of them are quite quite deep pools so, maybe this is where the shot is. So I figured it was time to take a shot. I think, I've, I think I've pretty much rinsed what I can find here. So I'm gonna go see what Chris has got, see if he's got any good ideas that I can steal. Uh, if not, then I think I'm gonna head back to where I found those, those rocks that were buried in the sand with ice all around them. See if I can do something with that. And then that very first waterfall on the way in had some nice icicles coming off of this branch. So I think I might try something with that, perhaps with the uh, 55 millimeter shooting wide open with some nice bulky in the background. We'll, we'll see, it might not work out, but let's go and see what Chris has got worth pinching. You having any luck? Um, I think so. Yeah, what you got? Um, I'm trying to get a reflection shot in this pool of water here. Yeah. With that snow yeah. and the red and, the, and then the white trees in that reflection, so I'm trying for a 16 by nine. Can, can I have a look, let's see what you got? Yeah, sure. That's quite nice. It's not a nice little reflexion shot. So I bracketed it. Yeah. Because I wanted to bring out a bit more detail in the reflection. So yeah. I'm um, overexposed in that area. And then on the cliff face, I went for a faster shutter speed to get the detail in the sky yeah. and a bit more on the cliffs. I mean, what else can you do with it? <laughs> like a cliff. It, it's a cliff, you know. Yeah. And nice reflexion. So I don't know. I don't know if I've got anything. Are you still working on this? Then you're waiting for a bit more. Um, yeah, I was hoping the sun's just because I think it's behind the cloud right now. Yeah, I'll pop out in ten minutes. Yeah, I was just about to just finish off taking a Ooh, shot over there. Look at the light hitting it now. That's actually the best light I've seen. It's kind of dappled. Yeah. All right, I'll let you continue shooting. Then I'm going to go back down the beach. See if I can find some nice uh, ice encrusted and lichen encrusted boulders. The 
by the time I returned to the scene of the crime, it became quite obvious that I'd missed that golden opportunity. I really wish I'd, I'd stopped earlier and taken that shot, that sort of fire and ice shot, because there's something about, once the sun's just popped over the horizon, I mean, now, it's, now it's way above, once it's just popped over the horizon, it gives you that hot red glow. And that's what I was getting earlier. I was getting this, I was getting this hot edge, this, this red edge to the sand and the rock and the ice, which was beautiful against that cold ice. And you, you would think I would have learned this lesson, you know, the, and the lesson is if you see something beautiful, just stop, stop and shoot it. But there's always that sort of hope that you'll find something better. You know, I was heading in the direction of the cliffs there, hoping for something spectacular, but sometimes those tiny little intimate scenes are just far more beautiful. So I'm annoyed with myself. You would have thought I would have learned that lesson, but obviously not. Uh, so that's that, that's that done. It's too harsh right now is the light for that. So my last chance of getting a shot, I think now, is to head back to the ladder that we came down and see if I can do something with those icicles. Those might work well with this harsh, bright light. Maybe I can get the backlit, we'll see, but uh, I reckon that's my last chance with this area. Anyway, unless I see something else, keep my eyes peeled. Now, don't tell my wife that I said this, but uh, I'm quite often proven to be wrong. And in this case, well, I was actually rather happy about that. So just when I gave up all hope, I finally found a little intimate abstract shot that I think is going to work quite well. Hopefully you could see that. Might look kind of crap from here, but let me just show you through the camera and you'll see what it is that's got me so excited. All right, this is a really flattering camera angle. <laughs> so what's got me so excited about this, it was pretty obvious. It's just this, this rock that you can see buried in all of these shapes here. But what struck me is as I'm looking down at it, it's almost like I'm still in the drone. It's almost like I'm looking down at a massive scene, like almost like this is a mountain and this is the landscape all around that area. So you're looking at this and I'm, I'm imagining it's kind of like a two kilometer square scene and all of this beautiful ice that's just following these gorgeous crenellations. Oh, that's a nice word. I do like crenellations. It's just, it's almost like a snowy foothills up to this mountain. I really, I really like that sort of fantasy aspect of a miniature scene like this and how the scale is all kind of skewed. You don't really know what the scale is. Well, you kind of do because you've seen me walk up to this shot. But if you hadn't seen that, maybe you would think it was a much larger scene. Anyway, I'm going to take this shot now and if it turns out any good, here's the shot. looking scenery was really making me hungry. So I'm quite happy with how that shot turned out. How about you? you? You get on with that shot over there? I think I did. I think I got a couple that are worth uh, showing. So oh. I'm looking forward to getting back and editing those. What's this? Well, I'm a little bit peckish. A bit peckish this morning. Always. I've got a few choices. Yeah. You know, we could go with a, you know, a walnut whip. Have you, you seen know? a walnut whip before? Mm -hmm. No, no, thanks. Okay. No. We could do a Tunnock's Caramel. Oh, they sell over seven million of those a week. I do like, uh, I do like a caramel. Mm. Yeah, what else you got? Well, if you're feeling a bit healthy, we could always do a Nature's Fig Bar. But, so, you know. I'll tell you what I can do with that. Mm. Anything else? That's all I got. I bought three options. You enjoy that walnut whip, mate. Yeah, thanks, bro. Yeah. Thanks. I'll enjoy that caramel. <laughs> oh, it's a bit hard due to the cold. If you're watching this, Tonux, please do get in touch because I wouldn't say no to a 12 year supply of caramels. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't.
A fun time was had by all at the seaside. Did you have a fun time? Yeah, there was no 99s though at the seaside. Only the Brits will understand what a 99 is, which is <laughs> clean your filthy mind. It's an ice cream with a flake in it. Ideally with some raspberry sauce. Mm, you, you have the raspberry good, yeah, sauce, yeah. Good, yeah. Fantastic, but you, you can't get them in North America. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should have like a, a 99 stall, a little, a little ice cream wagon. That's what you could do with that. <laughs> Make a Mr. Whippy. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it the old thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to tickle my bell and uh, we'll see you in the next one. I guess you'll uh, be hoping not to break down on the way home. Yeah, you... it's 15 kilometers. Oh yeah. So. Maybe get halfway. Yeah. Well, you know, if you break down, yeah. if you need some help, yeah. call CAA. They'll pick you up. Right. Unless you're on a dirt road. Then you fall.